Hello everyone. One thing every Hearthstone player has to tackle is learning when, how, and why minions die. Questions will arise like, I killed that mad scientist with my minions battle cry. How come the mirror entity can activate so fast? Or, that warsong commander is at zero health. How is it still able to grant grim patrons charge? Because Blizzard has no plans to make an official rulebook, we must create our own for our observations and explanations. So I present to you a video that will comprehensively study how Hearthstone deals with death. Whenever possible, I will source other people's videos that I've used and provide logs for my own in the video description below. This video is a product of the last two months I've spent studying Hearthstone mechanics with other members of the Hearthstone community and rewriting the advanced rulebook. When even full-time streamers such as Kriparian do not understand how death works in Hearthstone, it's clear that something needs to be done. Where's my card? Let's start with some basic terminology. A phase is a surrounding block created whenever one or more events or triggers are raised. A sequence is composed of one or more named phases in a row. These phases are resolved one by one, with no pitting and no going backwards. However, between each phase, we do death processing for as long as is necessary before moving on. In Hearthstone, every trigger, event, and phase must process all of its consequences and their consequences and so on, except for death, before we can move on. We call this resolving. Let's look at the sequence of playing a spell. For simplicity, we're ignoring Dragonkin Sorcerer and Counterspell and are left with just three phases. The on-play phase, where minions like Mana Worm and Questing Adventure trigger, the spell text phase, where the spell itself is fully resolved, and finally, the after spell phase, where minions like Wild Pyromancer and Flame Waker trigger. Each phase will run death processing in between, meaning that if we cast a spell but its target dies due to Violet Teacher plus Knife Juggler before that, then the spell will hit it in the graveyard instead. Similarly, if resolving the spell causes our Wild Pyromancer to lose all health, it will be removed from play before it can trigger. Now let's look at a simplified version of the sequence for playing a minion. The phases govern the order in which different kinds of triggers occur. First the on play phase, the on summon phase, then the battle cry phase, then the secret activation phase, and finally the after summon phase. This knowledge of the phases and that death processing occurs between them sheds light on the interaction between mad scientists and battle cries. The mirror entity does not need to exist until the secret activation phase. If we bring it into play in a later phase, such as the after summon phase, it is too late and will not trigger off of the played minion. However, no matter how we bring it into play before the secret activation phase works, here using successive death processing. Also, this is too cool not to show off. When Mirror Entity copies a minion that's only alive due to Aeoras, it instantly dies. Finally, note that if a sequence is started inside of a phase, or a phase inside of a phase in general, death processing remains suspended until the outermost phase is done. Otherwise, the knives thrown from each Boombot summon would process deaths before the next Boombot would appear. However, instead we see that all the death processing waits until the battle cry phase is over. Let's define the death phase. After each phase of the sequence, if any characters are found to now be dead, a death phase is inserted into the sequence. A death phase can have another death phase after it, with no limit on how many times it repeats. In the death phase, all characters have already been removed from play, and their deaths are considered one by one in order of play, before we once again check for deaths. Here is a video by Bob Cha Cha that shows off how death phases work. The spell, Ancestral Spirit, has added a death rattle to certain knife jugglers that will summon more knife jugglers on their death, triggering many knives to be juggled. However, the zero health knife jugglers remain on the board and able to throw knives until the current death phase is fully resolved, and Hearthstone finally checks for deaths once more. Note that this video was recorded after Naxxramas, and back then, zero health minions did not block summoning effects like they do now, but otherwise the mechanics on display are the same. We call the step where Hearthstone checks for, notes, and removes all zero health and destroyed characters death processing. Death processing occurs after each phase and never occurs inside a phase. No matter if 1 or 16 characters are found to be dead, they are simultaneously removed from play and the consequences resolved inside of a single death phase. You might ask, can you save a character from dying if Hearthstone is so lazy about checking for deaths? The answer is yes. In this example, the healing term is played after Baron Geddon. Both triggers Q and Resolve in the end of turn phase before death processing is done, so the healing totem will survive this turn. Heroes work the same way. We saw in Disguised Toast's Follow the Rules challenge that if two simultaneous triggers, this time two death rattles in death phase, bring you to zero health then heal you, you remain alive. But if you are brought to zero health in one phase, in this case the spell text phase, but then healed in a subsequent death phase, it is too late your hero was already removed from play in death processing. 
This is signified by the scream of your hero dying. As of goblins vs gnomes, zero health minions still take up space on the board, meaning that if you cast Bane of Doom on your own imp gang boss with a full board, neither the imp nor the demon is summoned, because both of these summons were attempted in the spell text phase, before death processing had occurred. Seeing this you might wonder, is the destroy effect an instant kind of death, or is it like having zero health and it waits until the death processing step? Here we see Force of Nature played, then Kelfizard. During the end of turn phase, the remaining treant will activate the whole Kelfizard in order play, so by that time it should be destroyed. Yet we see that Kelfizard does not revive it and only brings back the other two treants. Therefore we conclude that destroy really means pending destroy. It sets a flag that is checked during the next death processing and is alive and well until that point. Internally we call this flag to be destroyed because that is what it is called in the logs. A consequence of this is that minions that are pending destroy remain on the board and can run triggers. Here Doomsayer has played four Mimiron's heads and despite all the mechs being pending destroy, Mimiron's head triggers and creates an alive and well Voltron, though without the animation being glitched out. In addition, we should mention that enchantments can save a minion from dying, not just healing. Here, Haunted Creeper, Explosive Sheep, and Dark Cultist are simultaneously killed, and the death rattles resolve one by one in a death phase. The Explosive Sheep mortally wounds both Spectral Spiders, but Dark Cultist's health buff saves one of them from dying. Now let's introduce the queue. Each event or named phase has an associated queue that holds all its triggers. Similar to how phases have special rules, queues have special rules too. The first rule is that a queue is not populated until half zone reaches it. The second rule is that half zone will add all eligible in-play triggers in order of play. The third rule is that after we're done populating, the queue is closed to new entries that appear later. And the fourth and final rule is that triggers may decide to not trigger if they are no longer eligible for any reason. Let's demonstrate these rules. If Trogzor summons a burly rockjaw Trog, even though we're still in the on-play phase of casting a spell, the new Trog cannot trigger because it was not around for the start of the queue. Similarly, if we play a Sludge Belcher, then Avenge on an empty board, and our opponent kills the Sludge Belcher, Avenge cannot trigger because it was not eligible when the queue began and it is too late for it to be added. If you play a Llamabot followed by Mimiron's head, a Llamabot will trigger first and remove a mech from the field. Mimiron's head would now trigger, however it aborts as it is no longer eligible. Finally, if Grim Patron attacks into Imp Gang Boss, Imp Gang Boss triggers first because triggers on the attacking damage go first. A Knife Juggler might injure the Grim Patron to zero health. Finally, when Grim Patron would trigger on the counter attacking damage, Caesar is mortally wounded and nothing is summoned. How do death phases use cues? Since a death phase consists of many death events, each one has its own queue which is not populated until we reach it, as we resolve each death event one by one in order of play before moving on. And what goes in the queue? Secrets, death rattles and triggers populate each queue in order of play with no special priority over one or another. We call these, in general, consequences of death. Well, okay, there's one exception. Redemption always goes last in a given queue. This is to prevent a minion's own death rattle from killing the copy made by redemption. To demonstrate, let's play a Cult Master, Duplicate, Explosive Sheep, another Cult Master, Ancestral Spirit on the Explosive Sheep, and finally a Flesh Eating Ghoul. When the Explosive Sheep finally dies, the queue for its death event in the subsequent death phase contains all these different kinds of triggers in the exact same order they were played in. First the Cult Master, then the Duplicate, then the Explosive Sheep's Death Rattle, then the other cult master, then the ancestral spirit, and then the flesh eating goal, just as we predicted. Next, we can show how each queue is populated separately, meaning that one death event can bring into existence triggers that will queue in later death events. If a mad scientist is one of many simultaneous deaths, it can put into play duplicate. It won't be able to trigger off the mad scientist's own death, but it will queue and trigger in the next death event in order of play, which you could not do if a death phase had one massive queue at the start. Avenge has an extra requirement. To queue in a death event, there must be a friendly minion on the board to receive its buff when the queue is being populated. In this example, Avenge is pulled by the Mad Scientist, but it can only queue on the first death event where a friendly minion can be seen. This means that instead of triggering after the damaged golem appears, it queues and triggers after the unstable ghoul's death rattle instead. Order of play is important here. On death triggers, just like odd death secrets, can appear in the middle of a death phase and queue to every later death event. Here we use simultaneously dying death lords that pull flesh eating ghouls into play. The one pulled by the first death queues and triggers on the second death. 
but the final flesh eating ghoul pulled has no later deaths to react to and triggers zero times. Now that we understand how death phases work, I'd like to show you a magic trick. Using only two mad scientists, I will draw both duplicates from my deck in a single death phase. No one believed it would work. So what happened? Where did the second duplicate go? As you can see, it was indeed in my deck. Of course, I was trying to trick you all along. If you saw through it, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. The reason it didn't work is simple order of play. By the time we consider the second death event, the order of play is Mad Scientist Death Rattle followed by Duplicate. As the same secret can never be in play twice at once, the Death Rattle whiffs, then the Duplicate activates. We needed another minion in between to fix the problem. However, we can indeed have the same secret activate twice in the same death phase, with more minions in between, this time using Avenge. Let's play a Haunted Creeper, Unstable Ghoul, Avenge, and then some other minions. For convenience, the order of play is left to right. I challenge you to use your new understanding of death phases and cues to determine the end result. How'd you go? Now it's time to talk about Aeoras and enchantments. It's clear that these things must eventually be processed because they can enter and leave the board, but when and how? The visuals of Hearthstone are not always accurate, so we must make gameplay based tests. Aeoras are passive effects tied to minions. They may grant attribute boosts to specific other minions themselves, make your hero immune, or change how your effects work, so long as they are in play. Are all these effects programmed to work the same way? Let's explore further. First, we know that Aeoras update between each phase. Here, the Goblin Sapper draws a card due to the preparation phase, and during the combat phase, has the boosted 6 attack. Seeing this, it's natural to ask, does the Aeora update happen before or after death processing? The answer will surprise you. In this experiment, we play Orcanized Soul Priest, Zombie Chow, Enemy Death Lord, and Zombie Chow in that order. A circle of healing is used to kill all minions simultaneously so a single death phase considers all of their deaths. What we observe is that neither the simultaneously dying Soul Priest nor the Soul Priest summoned mid phase converts either Zombie Chow to damage. See for yourself. Now let's make things more complicated. If Aeora's update for death processing is done, let's simultaneously kill an explosive sheep and stormwind champion. We would expect the Aeora to shut off, meaning the full health minions lose one health point, and the explosive sheep takes off two more, leaving the mana worm at one health. Instead, the mana worm is left at two health, indicating the Aeora disappeared after the explosive sheep's death rattle. So what happened? Faced with this, our model becomes the following. Between phases, first we update health and attack Aeoras, then we run death processing, where we remove zero health and pending destroy characters from play, then we update other effects of Aeoras, then we proceed to the next phase. To investigate further, we exploit a discovery from a previous video, which is that area of effect damage that hits all characters ignores characters already at zero health. How is this useful? It means if a health Aeora or enchantment appears, and abomination triggers and hits it, that Aeora or enchantment is already in effect. First we test this with Aeoras. Watch the Voidwalker's health as we do 2 area of effect damage, which simultaneously kills the Voidcaller, Explosive Sheep and Abomination. First Malganus appears, then the Voidwalker drops some minus 1 health, then Abomination ignores it, and finally the health AR appears before death processing and saves the Voidwalker. This approves that health AORs do not update in the middle of a phase. Now, let's test it with enchantments. We play Avenge, Haunted Creeper, Explosive Sheep, and Abomination. First, the Explosive Sheep sends both Spectral Spiders to minus one health, then Avenge buffs one of them, then Abomination hits only that Spectral Spider. See for yourself. This proves that enchantments do update mid-phase, even though ARs do not. To summarize everything we've learned, Aeoras never update mid-phase, but enchantments do update immediately mid-phase. And between phases, we do this in the following order. AR update for health and attack, then death processing, then AR update for all other kinds of effects. Okay, you've learned all the rules. Now let's learn about the exceptions. 
Three cards in Hearthstone force the death phase to run inside of a phase. The spell text phase for Poison Seed to reincarnate, and the start of turn phase for Memorand's head. So what does a forced death phase look like? Because a forced death phase starts inside of a phase, it runs death processing in only one death phase. Any minion that should die after it ends, remain the board until the outermost phase ends. As we demonstrated before, interfaces don't run death processing, it only runs at all because it got forced to. Let's play Poison Seeds with summoning and damaging death rattles in the field. Notice how the mortally wounded spectral spiders remain on the board, patiently waiting for the spell text phase to end and for death processing to run once more. Now let's trigger Mimiron's head on a board full of Boombots. Notice how the allied Boombots are triggered and mortally wound the enemy field of Boombots, but they patiently wait in the field until the start of turn phase ends before unleashing their death rattles. Finally, for fun, here is an unnecessarily overcomplicated demonstration of the forced death phase of Reincarnate. The key point is that the Unstable Ghoul's death mortally wounds other minions, but Unstable Ghoul, created by Reincarnate, that's the one on the right side of the board over there, still appears before any further death processing occurs. The one appearing in the middle is from Ancestral Spirit, by the way. Let's move on to Exception 2, Instant Weapon Destruction. While weapon destruction due to durability loss works in the same way as for minions, that is, it's picked up by a death processing step and resolved in the next death phase, Blizzard forgot to code the concept of pending destroy for weapons. This means that, instead, they are explicitly triggered in the middle of the phase, kind of like a forced death phase but only for the weapon. First, let's show that durability loss works properly. If we attack into an Acolyte of Pain with our 4-1 death spike, both minion and weapon are removed from play before any death rattles resolve. Now here's an unintuitive interaction. Let's cast Sabotage on our enemy's Death Bite and Grim Patron. What we see is that the Grim Patron is set Pending Destroy, then the Death Bite Death Rattle goes off, and a new Grim Patron is spawned for the original one is removed in Death Processing. Investigating the log, we see that the Grim Patron is set Pending Destroy, and the weapon's Death Rattle is explicitly triggered as it sends the graveyard, again outside of a death phase. Because Death Processing doesn't run until later, this results in a brand new Grim Patron being summoned. Blade Flurry is coded in a similar way. If we play Acolyte of Pain, Enemy Death Spite, Acolyte of Pain, and then cast Blade Flurry, we see that Blade Flurry and Death Spite Death Rattle are triggered in the same phase before any death processing can run, meaning both Acolytes of Pain draw two cards, as you'll see. Finally, equipping over a weapon has the same problem. The destroyed weapon's death rattle is triggered not in the later phase, but in the same phase. Here we play Death Spite, Horned Creeper, and then equip a combat Perdition's Blade over the Death Spite, targeting the Horned Creeper. Both effects go off in the same phase, and the Spectral Spiders live. Exception 3 is a weird one that I only discovered recently. If a minion is forced to move between zones but cannot, such as to a full hand or a full other side of the board, it is instantly sent to the graveyard. But its death event does not go off immediately, like a forced death phase. That still happens in the next death phase correctly. Let's demonstrate a typical case. If we cast Vanish with full hands, all minions are returned or destroyed. Then in the subsequent death phase, death rattles run. So nothing unexpected here. here we now we play Sylvanas, then Death Lord, and fill the rest of the board, and our opponent has a Knife Juggler. When we cast Feign Death, the Knife Juggler is destroyed due to full board, and then a minion summon. Does the Knife Juggler throw one knife? Find out. The log helps us figure this out. Unlike other destroy effects, to be destroyed is not set. The minion is instead sent straight to the graveyard, with no death phase. Since it is already in the graveyard, the minion summoned by the death lord cannot trigger it, and no knife is thrown. This time it wasn't just a visual effect, it really was destroyed that fast. If you like this video and want more content like it, or just a group of people to discuss Hearthstone mechanics with, check out our community. We do science, bug testing, simulation, and reverse engineering. We have a website, an IRC channel on Freenode, and an advanced rulebook on the Hearthstone wiki. Speaking of, a big thanks to Addis, Xinhuan, Nightcap, Kalinko, Simfry, and anyone else whose names I forgot for doing so much testing with me over the past two months. I couldn't have done it all without you guys. Thanks so much. Finally, I'd like to give thanks to three other YouTube channels. Disguised Toast, whose Follow the Rules Challenge made me realize that there was a niche for documenting and demonstrating half cent mechanics. Bob Cha Cha Lol, who always comes up with great and interesting half cent science videos that other Mythbusters series would never think of. 
and animated half stone puzzles, whose puzzles are getting harder and harder with each iteration. I made a submitted puzzle for that place, thinking it'd be the hardest puzzle of all, and now I can't do any of the new ones. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.